Hello all, back with another PyDOS video. Some of you might have seen my recent postback video on the Arduino Nano Connect. Arduino had originally said that the Connect would have MicroPython support by the end of July, but last week when I checked, that was pushed out to September. On the other hand, Adafruit CircuitPython has had support for the Nano for at least a month now. For those of you not familiar with the Python microcontroller space, there are really two versions of Python that run on microcontrollers. There's MicroPython, which was originally developed by Damian George and now seems to be heavily supported through open source community development. And then there's CircuitPython, which also seems to have a lot of community support. However, Adafruit supports it directly and seems to be the primary developer. CircuitPython Day is this week. I thought maybe it was a good time to try and get PyDOS running on CircuitPython. So as you can see from the screen, I've got CircuitPython 7.00 Alpha running on my Connect at this point. It's a dirty version, and I think what that means is they flag it that way if you compile your own version. And I did have to make one modification to the circuit Python binary to work the way I wanted. And I think what we'll do first is I'll, I'll go through the process of what I had to do to recompile circuit Python with this setting. I'll put the links to Adafruit's instructions on how to recompile circuit Python in the description. As you can see here, the first thing you do is clone their copy of CircuitPython. Now they recommend forking it, which basically means making a copy of the GitHub repository in GitHub and then working off of GitHub. I, I tried that, but I, I think it's much simpler just to make a local clone copy of the code. And we're only going to make one re really minor change to it. Uh, and it's not really, it's just a parameter change. It's not making any logic change. So copy, you do these first and sections. I'm just going to copy the code here and then uh, paste it into um, my terminal window. I'll speed this up. The binary on the web actually did run, and I ran PyDOS under that OK. Problem was with memory management. Memory was terrible with the default configuration. And it all came down to memory structure called the Pi stack. I don't totally understand it. I don't understand much at all. I don't know if it works in Python or MicroPython. But from what I could tell, what MicroPython does is keeps the stack together with the general memory. Okay, and then uh, the next set of instructions talks about selecting the particular version that you're interested in. Now, I did try and check out the 6.3.x version rather than the latest alpha version that comes down by default, but I couldn't get the compile to work right. Um, I, I tried a different a couple times. So I just stuck with the alpha version. That seems to be working fine. Um, obviously, if you can, if you know how to use GitHub uh, and compile stuff better, you might be able to get the 6.3 version to work. Um, next, you have to uh, install a number of uh, Python code uh, utilities using pip. Now I've done all this. I'll go ahead and copy the text and do it. But uh, it should come back basically and say that I've got the latest version installed. I'm completely up to date. Now, Adafruit does make a comment here that says you might get some errors indicating that you don't have the right versions. And I did get four or five versions. They were red. I just had to scroll back and see what they were. And they'll say something like the requirements is less than 7.13, and in which case I would just back it down to seven, the, the first value less than what they say, or if they say you need something greater do something greater than what they say. And it was relatively easy to go back and find each of those error messages and then uh, run the pip3 install with a specific version number identified that would satisfy the requirement. Uh, the next thing on the Adafruit website is to install pre-commit. Again, I think this is if you're using GitHub to um, manage your code for you. And since I just copied a local copy, I, I don't think I need this. I didn't, I didn't install it. Uh, building MP cross is the next step, and um, we can do that again. I, I had actually done this early. I had an MP cross on my system already, so I, I pretty much just skipped it. But uh, it should come back and tell me it's up to date. Adafruit does say that you should do this from time to time, even if you've already made it, um, because they do occasionally update the MPY cross compiler. So I guess it's probably not a bad thing that I, I redo this make. So the next step we need to do is uh, make the modification that will disable pi stack. And to do that, we go down to the pi subdirectory. Oh, actually, yeah, in the pi subdirectory. And then I'm going to edit circuit python mpconfig.h. 
and we'll just search for PyStack. And from there, we should be able to just change this one to a zero. We'll save that out. That's the only change we make. And so now we'll go ahead and do the build. So we can see on the website, you need to find the go to the ports subdirectory and find the uh, board that we're interested in. And then we'll do basically the make. So let's go ahead and do that. Change directory to port, change directory raspberry pi. And then from here, I'm going to do a make. There's four uh, CPUs on the Raspberry Pi 4, so I'm going to hit J4 to get all four of them going. And then we want to put in board equals. So board Arduino Nano RP2040 connect. And if we make that, again, this will take a few minutes, so I'll speed it up. With CircuitPython, they keep the stack, stack separate. The problem with that is that you have to allocate a dedicated amount of space, and they didn't allocate a, a very much space. So I was very quickly running out of stack space. I don't know if there's any other impact to me turning off the separate stack. If anyone out there knows, I'd love to hear about it. But uh, so far, it's been working great uh, by turning that off. I did run into one other compile error. Uh, unfortunately, I don't, didn't save the error message, but basically it was an unresolved module. Uh, something to do with text or gtext or something like that. Turned out I just needed to run an apt-get install get text and, and then rerun the make command and everything worked fine. So there, it, the UF2 file has been created. That's what we need. And it shows me where I put it. I put it in the build Arduino Nano RP2040 connect subdirectory. Um, and so that firmware.uf2 file is basically the circuit Python, and all you need to do is copy that over onto the RP2040 when it's in boot mode. We'll go ahead and boot up PyDOS, hit the Control D in the uh, REPL, and if I type in version, see I'm running 80.82c. This version should be out on GitHub now. See the operation is basically the same. I can do DIR to my directories. There were a couple of issues that I had with it, uh, and a couple of uh, nice surprises. On my first attempt to run PyDOS on CircuitPython, when I started up PyBasic, I, it would run, but it would very quickly give a PyStack exhausted error. You, you, it was basically unusable. I could print a few st statements and do very simple assignment commands, but as soon as I tried to do anything complex, it would uh, crash with the PyStack exhausted error. There were only a couple minor changes I had to make in order to run PyDOS on CircuitPython. The biggest change was in keyboard handling. In MicroPython, there's, there was the functionality to be able to process a single key input without waiting for an Enter key. This allowed me to do press any keys to continue when we're doing pause statements. Uh, it also allowed the file view external app that I had to display a screen of text and use the up and down arrows to scroll up or down. Ultimately, I had plans to maybe write a nano-style full-screen editor. I could do that in MicroPython because the arrow keys can be trapped, but in CircuitPython, I haven't figured out how to trap a key press individually without uh, processing an Enter key. The only impact this really had is that when I was pausing the screen, rather than saying press any key to continue, the CircuitPython version says press enter to continue. There are a couple libraries that exist in CircuitPython, but not MicroPython and vice versa. So basically, I just used the system library to identify which of the two platforms I was running on and then import the appropriate libraries when needed. And then, the, of course, the final difference was in memory management. Uh, obviously, we recompiled CircuitPython to make the Pi stack handled closer to the way it's handled in MicroPython. But it turned out that CircuitPython is either far more efficient or loads less additional code. CircuitPython actually leaves me with um, much more memory available. Uh, it turns out that um, this makes running Pi Basic programs a lot easier. So if I want to run Adventure, uh, basically it runs without any problem on CircuitPython. Um, do I load this up while I'm talking to you? Um, I mean, obviously you can run low and it can still run out of memory, but um, it, there's, a, there's just a lot more available memory 
after loading circuit Python. Um, so I haven't I, I haven't had any issues running events there under circuit Python. The only other change I made to PyDOS to support circuit Python was really about supporting the Nano Connect, and that was uh, when I chose pin D20 for my sound connection. I I went and looked at a number of RP2040 boards and thought that I chose a pin that was available on all of them. It turns out that on the Nano Connect it has a D20, but it's not accessible from Python. Uh, so I had to move the sound pin from D20 to D19. Other than that, there really weren't any other changes to PyDOS. In fact, you can do basically all the same thing. Uh, Adventure runs, oh, like I said, I, Adventure actually seems to run a little bit faster, not a huge amount, but I think it's noticeable. And I, I think that might have to do with the additional, not having to do as much garbage collection having the additional memory available helps speed that up. Um, speaking of speed, one thing I have noticed with the circuit Python is that uh, copying files takes much longer. So if I take a relatively lar large file, like we'll take adventure.base and we'll copy that just to um, another file. to another file, you'll see it, it'll take a fair amount of time to copy it. And in MicroPython, it, I mean, it's not instantaneous, but it's much faster than this. Uh, you know, it's maybe three or four seconds to copy it. And you can see this is probably on to 15 seconds already, and I, it might take as much as 30 or 40 seconds to copy this file, which, as I say, only takes a couple seconds on MicroPython. I was afraid that, that there, something about the way CircuitPython was dealing with file I.O. was going to be a major problem with me because obviously in PyBasic, the way I managed to deal with larger basic programs was heavily using temporary files and executing code off of the flash directly rather than in memory. So I'm not ro loading the basic programs into RAM. I'm reading each line of code from the flash as it's being executed. Um, so when I saw this copy taking so long, I was concerned that it would cause problems. In the original versions of PyDOS, I would read in the entire file and then display it on the screen when you did a type. Or I'd read in the entire file and then write it back out as one stream. And in order to prevent memory errors, I converted both of those operations to reading in one line at a time and displaying it. Now, if I do a type, and I'll put a pause, so, well, we'll type it to the screen um, without the pause, just so you get an idea of how fast it goes. You can see that the type obviously isn't slowed down. So reading in one line at a time isn't a problem. And PyBasic still seems to run fairly well. And so it must be in the right operation that things run much slower. And maybe that has to do with another major difference between CircuitPython and, and MicroPython. And that is that when you connect a CircuitPython device to a host computer, a PC or a Linux box, it presents the flash space as a USB drive to the computer so that it's very easy to transfer files. You basically just drag and drop files over to the USB drive, which is the flash of the device. It makes it very easy to transfer codes, but because the host computer has write access to it, the microcontroller software by default does not have write access to its own flash. Now, and for a lot of projects, this makes absolutely no difference. Uh, if you're controlling motors or lighting up LEDs or doing most of the things that people do with microcontrollers, you don't need to write to the flash as the program's going. But in PyDOS's case, it's all about accessing the flash. The, the reason I originally developed it was to be able to see what was on the flash storage space and to be able to manipulate it, uh, create subdirectories, delete files easily. So obviously I need rewrite access to it. So one of the first things I did was uh, modify the behavior of CircuitPython so that PyDOS had write access to it. And by doing so, the host computer can no longer have write access to it. So when it's in this mode, you can't drag and drop files onto the CircuitPython USB. The, the USB drive still shows up as a flash drive, but it only shows up as a read-only one. So it's still convenient for getting files off of it. It's just you can't update files on it. Now, the way you change that configuration is, and I have a couple of files here. One's called boot.readwrite. And so what this does is remounts the flash file system so that PyDOS has read-write access to it and the host system has read-only access to it. And then there's a boot.readonly, uh, and you see all we're doing is changing a parameter from false to true. And read-only uh, will reconfigure the flash so that PyDOS does not have write access to its own to flash drive, but the host file can, uh, the host machine, the machine you're connected to, can now copy and, and write to the presented USB drive. 
so having these two options here, and, and actually wrote a little py Python script, filesystem.py, uh, which will basically write one of those versions onto the boot.py file. So if I type in filesystem.ro, that uh, creates uh, the, the active version of boot.py uh, with the version that'll, that'll be read-only for PyDOS. So now that I've got this running under CircuitPython, I guess the next step is going to be to dig into the Adafruit documentation and see what I can do, if anything, with the Wi-Fi functionality of this chip. That's about all for this update. Hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.